Are you guys able to see my screen? Perfect. Uh, so, getting further from what we did yesterday. So, yesterday we were able to drill down and understand what a flow rule is all about. Yes, it appears under the process category and it belongs to rule OBJ flow class right and then what it contains is graphical representation of it contains graphical representation of few shapes using which you can design a flow we designed a customer flow yesterday right where we did see we did see that uh, using graphical representation Pega automatically gave us this particular flow and uh, it has connected these shapes via few arrows and those are called as connectors every flow has a start and end and uh, it does we, uh, it does have few shapes which are like basic shapes advanced shapes and automation shapes we just saw what is assignment shape all about and how exactly we can map the user interface into a uh, flow that is on the connector you can map the flow action which you had created which in turn contains the section yes or no did we see that yes no perfect also what we did was we ran this flow and we saw that a work object was getting created right whenever we ran this flow if you see a c4 a work object which has a py id this is the prefix c is the prefix hyphen 4 is the id which is getting created how is that happening we have told in the process tab of this particular flow that hey create me a work object whenever i run this flow as well as we have mapped that to the work parties are mapped to py case management default because of which we are seeing the work objects now we saw that hey the work object got created but how do we ascertain from a database standpoint like just having understanding of pega won't be sufficient for you to develop anything right from a database standpoint if you remember the first class we discussed i asked you i insisted you to go over you know sql basics sequential query language basics which helps you understand how to interact with the database right we have to do that uh, so there are a lot of products for database oracle db2 microsoft sql all these are products right now this particular personal edition which pega gives you comes with uh, postgres database postgres is also a database which is being used here whatever you create is getting saved in that database exactly similar to your phone right whenever someone tries to give you his number what do you do you note it down and you uh, save it in your phone memory or your sd card right same way when you try to do something on this application has to get saved uh, it has to be saved somewhere right that's why we need a database and that database is nothing but postgres now to access that database you know you will need something you know any database to connect to it you will need a viewer what is a viewer for example if you have to see how, the contacts you saved what will you do you will go to the phone contacts and then you will view it right the viewer for the numbers which you saved is the uh, the contacts application which is present in your phone similarly to view a database right you will need a viewer uh, for oracle you can use uh, uh, something called as sql developer for postgres postgres comes with something called as pg4 admin it is called as pg4 admin if you see here pg admin you can just google for pg4 admin and then you can download you know the uh, postgres uh, administrator tool what is this tool this tool will help you you can click whatever the uh, operating system you're using uh, most of them will be using windows if you ask, you might have mac os you can use mac uh, you can click on windows and it will give you different versions available of that any version you can download and what is what is this the need of this thing because the database being used in the personal edition is postgres we will need this pg4 admin to view it in the sense whatever is there in the database to see that you will need this software that's what we are seeing here 
okay once you download it it's just a, a exe file just click next next and it should be helping you install it once you install that uh, okay once you install that you can open that so let me close and open this guy leave okay it's called pg4 admin pg admin okay see pg admin is the app once you install you will see this app in your run prompt just click on this this should launch the pg admin tab now like once this is launched we'll discuss the next part so very important wherever you go you will have a database and that database needs some software to connect to it and so that you can view what is there on the database why are we doing this we want to know when we are creating these work objects where is this data going and setting right of course you are seeing this on ui but where is this coming from where is this getting saved right we want to understand that to do that we are using pg4 admin to understand that perfect perfect when i launch it i see something like this pg admin file object tool so servers is where you will have to register your server i do have something called test i don't need that uh, what i will do let's create one for my pega for the pega installation which you have done let's register our server to uh, to know what details have to go in here let's try to right click on this if you see it will ask me to create you know re register a server okay this is where you will be telling hey i have a pega server and then that has to be registered okay are we able to see that we downloaded pg4 admin installed it from servers right click on that register and say register a server okay now it is asking me give give this a name is what it's asking so i'll say this is my pega db and then it is also telling either host name or address or service must be specified so to these details are specified here but where will you find these details right for your pega installation where will you find these details whenever you install your pega personal edition you know wherever you have installed it for example i have installed it inside 8.7 installation pega personal edition and then there is a directory called tomcat are you guys with me perfect so i came to my installation wherever i had installed this particular personal edition there is a directory called tomcat open this directory okay inside that there is a directory called conf which means configuration which means anything related to server configuration that goes inside this directory let me open that what did i do personal edition tomcat configuration inside this you will find a file called as context this is a xml file how do i know this is a xml file if you see the type it tells xml document make sense why am i coming here to know what details should go under the server when i'm trying to register the server it's asking me host port uh, you know username and password is what it is asking me every place you go you will that will be running on a server and that server will have a configuration directory under which there will be a context file inside which you can find your database details the pega installation the pega or the pega application which is running which will be connecting using these details which are present in this context.xml remember this thing whichever server you know we can figure that out which is straightforward but understand that this is how you will be able to extract those details now when you try to open this you know it looks something like this okay so if it is too fancy you you are not able to understand this is nothing what we are telling here is it is just telling okay this will be the username this will be the password this is your uh, host name is what they are saying that's what it is it is saying so one easy way to work with this thing is just copy this so what one way one easy way of working with this thing is just copy this xml what are we trying to do we are extracting the server information from the context.xml file that's what we are doing right we need those whatever fields we are seeing here we need 
details to fill in here. So to get that, what I did, I went to context.xml inside my configuration directory and then there is to format any file, right? There are a lot of tools like for XML, there is something called as XML grid dot net. Okay. Just open this, whatever content you copied there, right? To read that it is really challenging. You know, sometimes people who are new to this thing, they'll find like, oh, what is this? Is it gibberish? I don't understand this. It's not something which I can make sense to me. This nothing but when I try to copy that and say submit, Uh, okay, showing some issue, no problem. Let's try to uh, go back to this directory and say open in not this way. So, what is here? Sometimes when you try to open it in Internet Explorer, things get into an issue. So, edit. Okay, let me control D, control C, and then I'm copying that content onto this thing XML grid.net. Why? To understand what this contains. Uh, also joining. Okay, perfect. So what I'm trying to do, I'm I just copied that content and I'm pasting it here. I'll do submit. So if you see in the bottom, whatever is there as part of this particular XML file got sorted here. If you see, it starts with context and ends with context. See that is what it is saying here. It is starting with context, ending with context, and it tells watch it resource. Perfect. What I want, I want to see what is the environment which I am trying to deal with, right? If you see, there are two things here, right? All that content which was there got formatted into a tree, yes or no? Right? This is the root element, they call it root element. This is not necessary, but I'm just letting you know because XMLs is something which you will be looking into when you start working with your client. You'll be getting a lot of XMLs to deal with just to help you understand how you can simplify that. If someone gives you a file, very easy, right? Just come here, put it in this thing, this thing, and then in below it will show you what it is having is just key value pairs. This is the key, this is the value, this is the key, this is the value, this is the key, this is the value. That's what it is. Does it make sense? Perfect. So what what did I need to set up my connection? I needed a host name, a, a password, right? I needed these two name or I already gave. I told that this is a Pega DB. Now I, I need these details. So to get these details, I am here. Uh, I formatted that particular XML. Now I got those details. So if you see in the URL, this part, the local host part is your host, host name. So let me give local host here. Okay, I got the host name. You can give IP address also. The your system's IP address also can be used here. Instead of localhost, you can give that. But for normal understanding, let's give localhost. Username is already there, Postgres. Let's try to see what is the password. What is the password here? Postgres, right? Yeah, perfect. So we I get this password also. Now I can come here and I can say my password is this. Also what I will say is save this password because next time again when I have to connect, I will have to give the password again if I don't save it. So I'm saying, hey, save this is what I'm enabling. That's it. What did we do? We got the details from context.xml file. That is very important. Where can I find my database connection details? From the context.xml file on the server. Does it make sense? To see this also, if you can understand it is good. See, it has the resource name and everything. But to understand, sometimes it is challenging because too much of data and you don't know how 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 exactly it is built. So what you can do, you can copy it, throw it to xmlgrid.net or any such. There is something called as Code Beautify also. You can use that also. Code Beautify. No? This also helps you like, you know, there is something called XML formatter. You can paste your XML and then it will load the tree here. If that makes sense. Okay. You can use tools like that. All these are like smart ways of developing, you know. This is how you will be able to develop faster compared to others. Perfect. So I got my database details from my con uh, con context.xml file. I put that in my PG admin tool. 
Now let me save. Perfect. So I was able to save that. Now let me expand this. See, this is this a DB which a DB server which registered? Do we agree? Like a DB, right? And then now I can expand this, and I can see what all schemas are there in this. Why do we? What do you mean by schema? Whatever rules you create, right? Whatever rules you create in Pega gets stored. Can you hear me? Perfect. Okay. So whatever rules you create in Pega will be part of rules schema. Do you see the environment tag here under which you are seeing? Hey, PR configs database Pega rules default schema. All the rules you create, the rules we for example we created the property. Anything will go under rules schema. A section we created that also will go under rules schema. Whatever. in terms of data for example we created a work object that is data right it has data it has the user customer information stuff like that that goes under data schema pega has two schemas one is rule schema one is data schema rule schema purely for rule purpose whatever you created under rule dash class will go under rule schema anything else will go under data schema clear guys yes no Able able to understand, not able to understand. I can explain it again. No issues for me. Understood. How we can connect a database in which is linked to a Pega application. So if you see, there is data schema and rule schema which came when we connected to this Pega application or Pega instance. Right now, right. Let me try to see. what is there in data schema before that how do i know what table is my work class map to how can i know what table just remember that we created c1 c2 c3 and c4 work objects right let me close them customer flow perfect now if you guys have been attending my class i want to understand for example i give you a work class i want to know which table is it connected to in the database how will i know that any one of you yes no don't know how to find it Okay. I want to know which table my work class is connected to. Okay, I'll tell you again. So, like we discussed when we were discussing classes, we understood that hey, this is my work class which got created and. all the work classes are nothing but concrete classes right we saw that we can create objects to it uh, we saw how exactly in java we can create classes and we saw uh, how objects are created same way work class is also a concrete class is yes or no and it belongs i mean it is a class group right it is a class group and if i want to know what table it is connected to what do i do i perform test connection right didn't we see this yes no we saw this right and then we also see that this class is mapped to data dot pc alpha alpha auto hyphen work yes or no is data schema as when we created the database server ring did we see that data is a schema here right so we know okay now we understand that okay whenever we create anything with respect to you know uh, data there is a data schema which gets created and then under that 
there is this table is what it is saying if you see this pop up when i try to do test connection it is telling me there is this table called pc alpha alpha auto hyphen work under which you can find this class related details is what it is telling let's try to see this table how can i find this table let us go back to our pg4 admin this is where i can browse whatever tables are present as part of data schema am i able to find the data schema here under schemas right perfect so now when i try to expand that there is a category called tables let me expand that i just expanded the tables category and i see bunch of tables right bunch of tables is what i am seeing here now i want to see pc what is my table name pc underscore alpha right alpha to okay perfect am i able to find that table see is this not the table which it is telling it is telling that hey that particular class is mapped to pc pc alpha auto work yes or no this is how you will be able to point to it you will be able to identify which table it is connected to what all columns are under that you can expand this columns thing and then you will be seeing all the columns here see so if i want to know what exactly what is this this is nothing but a view to see what the database contains database contains bunch of tables and they are separated by schemas data schema is for data related stuff rule schema is for rules related stuff let me say select I opened the query tool and I am telling select star from data dot pc. If I do control tab, it should show me all the tables. See, I am just saying pc select star from data dot pc alpha auto work. What this will do? this will if i execute this query see it is showing me all these columns with some data see the timestamp commit timestamp there is some it should be something called as create timestamp create date timestamp are we seeing one 28 uh, one row with 28 other with 27 perfect so let's go further we'll try to see it is telling the, the operator who created these rows is admin underscore alpha and if you see the px ins name is are these the work objects we created right so now we know how exactly to identify the work object which gets created where exactly does it go and sit right we know which table it goes and sits. Most of the columns are blank. I want to take you to one specific column which is called as PYID. Did we discuss about PYID yesterday? See? It's a work object ID which we gave. And then Pega created these work objects. Also, what it did, it has saved us, saved this thing in database so that we can come and take a look. Yes or no? Very important, guys. You guys have to look a little focus here to understand how did i know that i should come and look here i connected my database to the postgres database server but to come to this table i was able to go to my work class perform a test connection and i saw hey the table where i have to be looking for my work objects is pc underscore alpha underscore alpha auto underscore work did we get the technique how exactly we can come and look for where the work objects get saved? Yes, no. 
right so whenever you're trying to look at uh, any issue or a work object related issue the first thing you'll be doing is this you might be seeing on user interface but was it persisted or saved in database you have to figure that out there are other columns also i want to bring your attention to one specific column yeah this column called pzpv stream so we understood how to explore the database right we also understood uh, whatever work object gets created right any data you give there that gets saved under this particular column pzpv stream it is called as pzpv stream and this data type for example for age what was the data type we chose integer right for email we chose email and then stuff like that but within database when you have to store a huge chunk of data you can either save in blob or you can save in glob what is blob blob stands for binary large object you don't need to know anything detail about that just understand that whatever data you, the work objects you create they get saved under pzpv stream column see you see it tells binary data if i try to click that you won't be able to see because it is you know encrypted data you won't be able to see that okay but we need to know that this particular uh, work objects data gets converted into a blob and gets saved under pzpv stream column in your work table is it understood clob stands for uh, we don't use clubs but i'm just helping you understand what is that okay it is called as character large object these are just like data types like integer or you know like string like that these are also some data types and that is what pega has chosen to save the data of that particular case so c1 case data is in blob c2 case data is in blob c3 case data is in blob c4 case data is in blob these are blob this is a binary large object sort of a column pz pv stream understood guys the work object data gets saved in pcpv stream column very important the work object data gets saved in pc pv stream column very important you need to remember this stuff which you have to remember from today's classes how exactly you would connect to a database which is linked to a pega application how many schemas does pega have work sorry uh, rules and data rule schema will have any any rule you create goes and gets saved under that any data you create c1 c2 c3 c4 these are data right business transactions they are coming and sitting here which makes sense yes or no right so pcpv stream is something which will hold the work object data this particular column okay and we also saw pyid right pyid is also something which you saw that will be your work object id right pyid column also something we saw right did we see that pyid column it holds your work object id so instead of star i can say py id comma pz pv stream 
and px obj class that's it and this use these two uh -huh. if these many columns are too much and overwhelming you can just put these two and see the focus has to be here that is because these things are not to be written here control x now are we able to see the pyid and pzpv stream here right because you might be feeling oh th those are too many columns to understand i just uh, what i'm saying here is what is this this is nothing but sql sequential query language why do we need this database doesn't understand english i can't say hey database can you show me what is there in this particular table i can't say that i have to tell in the in the syntax which it will understand that is what sql is all about that's why i asked you go over w3 schools sql topic and you'll be knowing how exactly you can run these queries is it too challenging what are you saying we need two columns from this particular table select these two columns from this particular table and it got gave me all that data it's telling me pyid is this c1 c2 c3 c4 pcpv string make sense now anything new i create should get any work object i create should come up here right whatever i create didn't we see the timestamp also changing for example now let me run this flow again and let us see if the data gets reflected right Come on. So my flow is customer flow and that is not visible here because I have not refreshed this. Let me refresh this. Refresh. right now i'm able to see that now let us create one more flow and see if it is creating or adding the new work object there right run c5 agreed and now i should expect c5 here right Do I have another work object reflecting here? Do you understand how exactly this thing is working? Whatever work object you are creating is getting saved as a binary large object blob here in PZP stream. Of course, other columns are also getting populated, right? The work object data is getting saved in PZP stream column right okay in database i can see this data is there anywhere else i can see what data this particular work object contains yes you can do that if you remember in the initial classes we were doing we were understanding what are these explorers all about we understood like the header bar what it is all about the left side explorer also is is something which we understood how exactly we can use we are seeing but there is a bottom you know the the footer panel also has certain tools some debugging tools and of those tools one very important tool is clipboard i can click on clipboard coming back again from the footer panel you can you can also view this data which is which is available here on a page how can i do that i have to go to clipboard one is you can go to database and check another is you can also look from clipboard how do you see the c5 which we have created populating here yes no right and the page you would be interested to know where exactly these details are getting populated is called as py work page it's loading just give me some time 
Do we see something called as py work page? And what is the class it is pointing to? Alpha, alpha auto, hyphen work, right? Is this not my work class? Perfect. So I know that this is pointing to the right work class. And let us try to see, is this my work object ID which I created, C5? So we got two things to understand today. See my PY ID. We got, we understood two things. One thing, oh, from database, I can go and figure out which table it is mapped to by going into my class and doing test connection. Second thing, I can go and see what all work, object data, work objects got created in my database by running a select query on top of that table, right? And I can also come to something called as clipboard and see for that particular work object, what all details are populated. So we are having three places where we can view this data, right? One is of course your user interface, here you can see. And you can also see in your database. And you can also see on clipboard page. Are we on same page with this thing? Do we agree? None of this will make sense to you if you don't install this particular instance and try it out by yourself. I could be telling this 224 times and tomorrow again you'll be like, what is he saying, you know. Does it make sense? Guys, do you understand why you should be working on this particular instance in your local environment? Okay, so very important. You will have to uh, do that. So what happened here is whatever data was there on the user interface got converted into like pretty much like a XML format and got updated here like in a page as well as it got posted to the table also right in a blob format here the format is blob here you're not able to see anything because it is a blob format but on clipboard we are able to see that data right what all data is there I'm able to see that yes or no Perfect. So, if you see, it is nothing but a XML which got generated. See, this is how it looks. I can say I can shrink this and it tells page data. Of course, I can use a lot of tools to see how it looks, right? What tool will I use? XML grid.net. And then I can put it there and I can understand. For example, if I have to see what is the PY ID, I can find it here, right? What is my PY ID? Yes or no? So what I'm trying to show you is the data which you are seeing on your user interface can also be viewed in different places. Why do we need it? We'll know when as a developer when you try to develop these are the places you will be looking at to see if the data is accurate when you build when you try to trace these are the places you'll be looking at and the question also will be from the interviewer will be like how will you identify if any issues come? You see this issue on UI, what will you do? First thing, you will verify your clipboard page. Second thing, you will go and check in database if those data are present. Yes or no? Do we agree? Why do we need all this? For example, your date of birth is wrong in your Aadhaar. What does that mean? Doesn't that mean that whenever they create it, they put a wrong value and that got saved in this database? Yes or no? And all that you need to do is, that anyone has to do is modify that value to the correct value. Right? That is the fix for that, right? That's what you put application for. You will say, hey, uh, for example, if you change your phone number, you will go to the other guys and say, hey, my phone number is changed. What does that mean? You are saying, whatever you have saved in database, like technically saying, what you are saying is, hey, whatever you have saved in your Aadhaar database, can you modify that or change that to this new number which I am using? Technically, that is what you mean, right? When you say, hey, I want to change my phone number on other. This is how you should be start looking at as a developer, as a Pega programmer. Whenever you see a requirement, you should look at it like that. Whatever you try to do ultimately comes and gets saved in database. For example, let's say C1 is your uh, Aadhaar card number. Okay. And then under that, you have a lot of columns right age email everything so to modify that you are saying hey my other card number is c1 i want to i want my 
uh, phone number to be changed that means you want to modify whatever is the value of that particular field right for example here this particular uh, let's say email whatever is the value you want to modify that and change it to something which of of your desire right and when you try to do it you can also verify that if it has gone in correctly you can do that and save and you can come to database and check how oh, is it got saved perfectly also you can verify that from the clipboard yes or no do we understand how exactly you verify whatever data gets saved work object data gets saved into database in a blob format under pcpv stream column the same data can be accessed from clipboard under py work page we saw that also you can see that on ui perfect so we have reached so far now i will try to show uh, talk about what are different tables we have and with respect to what pega or automatically or out of the box provides okay this is this was your brief understanding of flow rule how exactly you can create work objects and stuff and the next piece is understanding uh, rule based tables or the tables which come as part of uh, pegas you know a product so work object data ultimately gets mapped to pc pc tables okay there are three type three forms of tables one is let me show you which pega provides three types of rule based tables pc tables right pc tables are nothing but the work object data was under pc table right if you see here where is this pc underscore alpha alpha auto work right pc just focus why this p of course it stands for pega a pc pega case is what they say i am not exactly sure but just remember that pc tables are more only for work object information to store work object related data we use pc tables there are some tables called as pr tables pr tables these are for um, uh, these are also uh, let's try to explore them there is pr tables and there is pr four tables pr4 in the sense the starting the prefix is that when you try to see your rule schema right now we are in data schema do we agree data and then data schema perfect let me minimize that let me go to rule schema all rule related stuff has to go here this is what we discussed right that is why we have two different schemas this is also called a split schema why because they have there are two schemas data and rules how do we know that we posted the context.xml in my in the xml grid and we understood that yeah pega provides two schemas see pega rules pega data rule schema under which all the rules will go data schema under which all data will go what is data work object is data right that's why you see pc underscore table have holding that in the same way the rule data goes under rule schema i am expanding rule schema i'll go to the tables under that and you will see the tables are name the naming convention for this table is pr4 underscore base pr4 underscore rule pr4 underscore rule underscore application are we able to see this so let us say i don't need this hmm. 
let me copy that stuff here for you guys right we are seeing what are pr4 tables let us say select stuff from pr4 underscore rule underscore application right and i'll say let's see this <coughs> sorry you know why this error because i'm not pointing to the schema you should do schema dot this thing only then it will execute I should go Okay, and I will say it's not getting paid. It's giving me some error. Let's try to see what exactly is going on. Uh, 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 columns. So if you see under application, we do have list of columns. Uh, why it is not going? That is unusual. Shouldn't happen like that. Should be allow me to. You know. Oh my God. I think I have 10 minutes. Zero rows returned is what it is telling. PR4 rule. Okay. Let me see. PR4 rule underscore. Function. okay perfect so it's slightly slower that's what it is other than that i don't think any issue is there so let me just run it again i want to see the app the application which we created does it get popped up here if you see anything which is with respect to rules gets stored under pr4 tables the business rules pega rules will be mapped to this particular application so 2012 i don't want that so now i want to sort this and how many okay 25 other okay let's go by that no worries you should be able to see that and i can also say where px create operator is equal to uh, so what i'm trying to i'm just trying to filter the results so that i can find my particular row 
Are we able to see the application which we had created? The application rule. Yes or no? See? If you see the application is alpha auto insurance which was created after we created the admin at alpha operator. That's the same thing which is getting populated here. So PR4 rules, what we have to understand any property, any section you created will be under this particular uh, this will be under these these tables pr4 rule tables how can we know that if you just browse this schema and you will see for property you will have a specific table for section you will have a specific table let us try to come down and see right mm. pr4 okay uh, the understanding here is what the takeaway here is the pr4 tables and pr tables are everything to do with what rules are created whatever rule you created will be uh, saved under pr4 table does it make sense yes no perfect see pr4 rule underscore property all the properties you created will be under this particular uh, you know table what are these these are tables right under these tables the flow you created will be under pr4 underscore rule underscore flow table Make sense? Section will be in the, in this thing. To identify where exactly your data is going, this is how you'll be able to identify all the rules underscore pr4 uh, pr4 underscore or pr underscore. That is where all the rules will go. All the data, where will the data go? Underscore pc. I mean, under pc. Does it make sense, guys? Too complex. Pc tables, all the work related data work object related data pr for rules pr4 also for rules why they have done that just for the classification of the product which they know better why they did that you know but this is where it will be going are we able to understand so today we covered you know where exactly the work object data gets saved how exactly can i connect to it where all can i go and see the data you know what are different types, uh, types of tables which are available how can you see that you can go and figure out which schema you have and then you can see browse through and check out what all different tables are there as part of this particular installation you know there are a lot of tables not everything is necessary just to give you an understanding of where to go and look for that you know if someone asks you hey I don't think this work object is existing you should be knowing where exactly you should go and look you should be knowing that this is your work class that's that's where you will be able to identify the uh, you know uh, the table it is mapped to and then from there pick that table up and then come to the database query and see if that work object is ex existing you created a section it's not reflecting come to this particular tables pr4 underscore rule underscore section see if that section is existing make sense guys that is it i think uh, for today i think we covered a decent enough uh, this is where we'll be you know putting a stop if you guys have any questions i can take do you guys have any questions yes no <laughs>